I'm on my way to Amsterdam today to meet Sella Molenaar in her studio. Sella is a Dutch illustrator and artist who celebrates the beautiful shapes of the female body. Her work is minimalistic, gracious and aesthetic. Her color palette ranges from black and white to warm earthy tones. Sella encourages every person to embrace their body, sensuality and their creative spirit. She worked with many renovated brands like Dior and HK Living. I am thrilled to meet her for the second time, but today for the first time in her studio space here in Amsterdam. Hallo. Ik heb het gevonden. Ja, yeah, goed. Het is goed voor mij. Kom in. Ik heb ook een paar sweets. Oh, like, oh. Oh, wat is dat? Het is like een French, French pastry. Oh, dank je. Ik heb het ook. Het lijkt een kleine pumpkin. Ja, <laughs> yeah, well. cute. It's like I soft on the inside and then caramelized on the outside. Mm. Yeah. Delicious. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome in my studio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, such a nice place. Every time I walk into such an old building with the high ceilings, it, it just has a special <laughs> charm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It has like aesthetic vibes like by itself. Yeah, That's totally. Yeah. How do you, how do you like it here? How do I like it? I mean, this is like an extension of my home. That's how it feels like. It's, it's my first permanent studio that I have. I've been traveling all over the city from <laughs> temporary space to temporary space. And this is the first time I, uh, yeah, I can stay here for as long as I like. And Great. It's, uh, it's also the, the most beautiful studio that I've ever had. So I like it very much here. Where does your fascination for the female body come from? I think that's just because I'm a woman myself and I think every work is in a way a self-portrait. When I'm expressing myself, I'm also researching myself in a way. So I think for me, my work is also an exploration of what it means to be a woman mm. or what it means to live in my body or what it means to be me. And that's why the, the feminine and the female body and feminine energies and feminine qualities are just a huge part of my work, I guess, yeah. Have you always embraced your own body or has it been no. difficult for you? Yeah, I think, a lot of, I think for a lot of women it's been a struggle because the, the beauty standards are so dominant and if I speak for myself, I, I definitely had to um, learn to love my body, yeah. And I see that around me for that, I, that that's the case for a lot of women, and that's for all, that's for instance also why I'm started to do the um, embodiment sessions in my studio. Mm -hmm. can, um, can you can you tell us what that is? And yeah, yeah, of session? course. Yeah, it's actually it comes from uh, figure drawing sessions. Like it's figure drawing actually taught me a lot about. Uh, about valuing and loving the female body in all its shapes mm. because I think when I was younger I was so strict on myself and I was so hard and I always saw the flaws first yeah and when I started um, literally like drawing all kinds of all kinds of women and all shapes of women and, and you know I really started to see that there was beauty was in everybody shape. yeah. Mm -hmm. And through drawing, I became softer and I started to accepting my own body. And um, um, yeah, there was also a point where I started to model myself and had some experience as a, as a nude model as well, also with photographers, but also in the drawing section, because it, for me, it was like so, such a relief to yeah. experience that. And yeah. I also wanted to be on the other side of the, of the spectrum. And it's, it's so freeing to be looked at without being objectified mm -hmm. because that's what hap that's what happened what's happening outside in the, in the world is when you're when you're a woman and you're out there then people will always judge you on the way you look and how attractive you are of your yeah. you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> and also through the male gaze a lot of times 
and to be looked at without being sexualized. Yeah. Because when you're figure drawing, you're not, you're not, you know, that's not the point. You're no. just, you're just looking at it like the way it is and appreciating uh, your subject just the way it is. Exactly. So that's actually that idea. That's actually the the basis of the embodiment session. Actually, during Corona, I started to. Um, you know, gather with women in my studio and did figure drawing sessions with other illustrators. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there wasn't a model there and we just modeled for each other. And, and sometimes there was, a, there was a model, but then it was like small women's circles. And because the literally like the nudity and the uh, people giving themselves, you know, let, really let, letting themselves be seen, beautiful conversations started. and. You know, we all connected on different levels and it was like such a safe space to be in. It was like healing for everyone who was there. And I was like, oh, that's literally like magic in there. Like women coming together, being vulnerable, uh, having, uh, you know, maybe heavy or like uh, vulnerable talks about their body and the body image. And, the, and you know, also the root where, the, where we came from, like how it was yeah. before and how it is now and how we're slowly mm -hmm. starting to accept ourselves and also letting each other in. And that was like the bit I was like, oh, it was every, every session I was like, wow, this is, yeah. this is magic. I want to do something with that and I want to share this with other people. And that's how the embodiment sessions came along, actually. So yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Can you tell us what you're trying to figure out? I really like the energy of the sketch. Yeah. And I always, and I actually want to capture the energy of the moment like that's that's the whole thing mm -hmm. and it's kind of hard when you start painting it's like it's 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 a struggle because during the corona times for instance i started painting and i really loved it but it's also way more structured and way more thought out and way more yeah i don't know it's like way more precise in a way mm -hmm. well i love the energy of a line mm -hmm. <laughs> and combining those two like I'm still, that's like the process where I'm in right now, actually, creatively. Mm -hmm. As in, I miss, my, I miss my lines in my paintings and in my drawings, I miss my paintings. And that's, I'm trying, I'm still trying to morph those two. <laughs> and that's, that's yeah. the process where I'm in now, like all these fun lines, you know, all the, all the lines that I just drew without thinking. Yeah. I love those, actually. I just... I wish I could, you know, I wish we could always draw, like, even when you go big or when you do it on the, you know, the final yeah. paper and yeah. it's not a sketch. Like, I wish we could always draw like it's a sketch. That's like, that's my mission. I yeah, think. I get that. <laughs> and still, every time there's like the first moment somebody walks in, it's always awkward. I mean, <laughs> it's, always, it's always awkward. I mean, you have to take off your clothes in front of me and... <laughs> Maybe you don't know me, yeah. but then it's it's such a it's also fun. It's actually a fun process, but it's also a healing process to see how from being awkward in your own skin, um, everyone gets in the end. Everyone is everyone forgets that they're naked, and everyone is like comfortable, and they they have you know they're really celebrating their own body by making it art, like to, do together you do, with me. Do you do some specific ritual or something for those people so they get comfortable? Um, well, of course, I'm setting the stage like I, I have like all the candles on and nice music and yeah. make it like a, a little cocoon. And we also have like a, a good talk beforehand, like, and there's always a moment where you feel like, okay, I think this is it. And I huh. sometimes I ask them to do like a compliment practice to, you know, give each body part a compliment or take off their clothes mindfully, like if they just really take their time and sometimes we start the first drawing like half clothed as well mm. like when it's then it's really like a process of uh, a longer time yeah there's all kinds of little rituals that i do like during yeah. the during the sessions yeah I, I make tons of sketches because it's like i love that process i also love to experiment and even now i have like three different I have so many different ideas in my head that I wanted to try only from that one sketch. Like I have the idea, I'm definitely going to make a collage out of this, but I also want to make a painting out of that. <laughs> and I also want to try to go big, but then keep the sketch lines, for instance, and maybe paint like a background and then the sketch line on top of it. It's like already three things that I wanted to try out of one 
line illustration that I made in two seconds. You should do it all. I'm, I'm definitely <laughs> gonna do it all and I'm like excited to try it all but it's like it's like a never-ending process it's like and sometimes along the way you make something beautiful on the back of a cardboard thing and <laughs> exactly, <laughs> or yeah. like you know paper from the from the trash bit from the, from the trash yeah and then like okay yeah I'm never gonna I'm never gonna top this it's like uh. the energy is in there like it's where it's yeah in. like for instance this work I made this this is my first acrylic painting it's like totally off style I like just ever yeah <laughs> this is like the first time that I tried it like during the corona times I was like Oh, I have this quad cardboard boards. I'm bored as fuck. I'm just gonna try something new. And then I made this thing. It's like completely out of style, out of tune in a way, because I was still figuring out my style yet, but I, I love it. I just, I really love this one. Yeah. But then it's made, you see, it's made on cardboard. <laughs> it's like, as a painting, it's like completely useless. It's not, it's not made on the good material, but I love this work. It's in a way, it's like a milestone in my, in my creative process, in a way. Yeah, and it has and been uh, transferred to, I think, fabric. Yeah, I sold it to Haka Living, and they made like wall charts from it. That, yeah, that sold like all over the world. It's like, yeah, textile and wall hangings. Yeah, yeah, they are beautiful. It's also that the you don't have to feel beautiful about everything, you know. It's also you can also just be thankful that your your body is working, That's for true. instance. That is functioning, that it took you from A to B, or that, that, yeah. you, that you can walk, that you can talk, that you can process food and all that stuff. It's like it's yeah. doing all that stuff the whole time. Yeah. Because it's like, that's like the difference between, you know, body neutrality and positivity. Like, yeah, you don't have to be positive about everything. You can hate <laughs> some, some things. Some that's things totally can fine. Be yeah. yeah. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. the negative voice in our head is sometimes so dominant, right? It's, it's it can be useful to have another story besides that. That's mm -hmm. just, yeah. It's so That's weird, right? That that the negative voice is so often so overpowering in, in, yeah. in many people and that we have to put actually, yeah, conscious energy into that positive voice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but I think in the world that we live in where especially women's bodies are so judged the whole time, it's not weird that you internalize that voice. Like if you open up a tabloid, or it's, for instance, or people judging women for getting fat after giving birth, or for instance, I'm like, oh my god, what are we? Why aren't we celebrating <laughs> that she gave birth? Why are we judging her body for having stretch marks and stuff like that? It's like, yeah. oh yeah, it's so it's not weird that we also internalize those voices and. Mm -hmm. It's like an active practice for me as well. It, it's it still is an active practice to um, celebrate my own body and celebrate, you know, ev everything that you are actually, or yeah. to, yeah, to make that alternative story besides the uh, the dominant one that's that's in our culture, I guess. I yeah. think it's it's so beautiful that you trying to change that with your work. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure, I think that's too much credit for this. <laughs> well, you, you, with your work you give, you give a voice, you give a visual voice to that, to that positive side. I hope so, yeah, yeah. If, if that's what you, what you're taking from my work, I, I'll, I'll, I I'll be so glad, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. I was wondering if you have any tips for um, people that struggle with perfectionism? How can you encourage them to just get lost in the process of free flow drawing? <laughs> Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Yeah. yeah. Close That's your eyes point. and draw with your non-dominant hand. That's like starting point. And also dismantle your limiting beliefs. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah, challenge your, your ways of thinking. That's like the starting point. And then closing your eyes and using a flowy material, for instance, that goes its own way. Yes. Like ink uh, could help. Yeah. Or uh, draw with your non-dominant hand so that you actually by the... Um, yeah, you actually create a space where control is limited. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. And also instead of drawing like this, draw like this. It's mm -hmm. like, give yourself less control and then practice with that on paper. It's like the safest space where you can practice letting go of control in your whole life. It's like, you know, the paper can be a playground to practice those 
and challenge those limited beliefs that things should be perfect because nothing is really. So. That's exactly why I love abstract painting so much. <laughs> yeah. Because it, yeah, because you cannot control it. Yeah. Like so many other things in life, you have the urge, I do have the urge to, to take control and to keep it as, mm -hmm. as safe and controlled as possible. And it, to me, abstract painting is such a relief that that I cannot control it and then it mm -hmm. um, it always reminds me that even though even though I cannot control it, it it might turn out it often turns out even better and more beautiful and yeah. magical than I could ever imagine it beforehand. Yeah. So we do it with eyes closed. Yeah, first you can load the pencil, you can still you can still look of course and then um, the thing that I often do before I start is just you literally like check in with yourself like yeah. what what is the energy that I'm feeling right now what is happening in my life and by that I'm closing my eyes breathing in a couple of times maybe also releasing some tension or thoughts that are still spinning in your head on your exhale and then the moment that I feel calm and centered. I just start by painting on the rhythm of my breath. And I try to keep my eyes as close, close as much as possible. And focus on the feeling that it gives me like I always start with like a sensory experience, like the joy of holding a pencil and moving it on a paper and how nice that feeling actually is. And just getting comfortable by, you know, just making something without expectations or goals. Playing around also a little bit, like moving my wrist and you know, exploring the possibilities of the material before I start guiding my, my energy a little bit more. It's like a lot of people have the presumption that they're not creative. And yeah. And that's also, <laughs> or that they, they can't draw because it's not beautiful or mm -hmm. it's not technically correct or it's not. Um, super skilled or something like that. We, we also live in a society where we think that creativity and art is only there for the people who study it or, or who are very talented. That's also the thing. Mm -hmm. But it's, that's not... That's not that, no, no, yeah, that's, that's just a, that's that's a, a big lie. lie. Yeah. yeah, that's a big, big lie. Yeah. Indeed. Creativity is for everybody to enjoy and it's, for, it's, it's healing for everybody and I mm -hmm. think it is... Um, valuable for everybody and yeah, yeah I, would, I would even go further that it's like it's like a human it's like a primary need indeed <laughs> for me it is I, I don't know if it's for everybody the case but um, I can totally agree on <laughs> for myself yeah yeah I mean without expression we didn't have language for instance or we didn't have culture or we didn't have anything that that connects people to other people because we can't, we can't communicate with each other if we don't have creative expression. It's like, it's like it, is, it is a human need to be connected to other people and to be also to be connected to themselves. And it's, oh, I, I generally believe that it's through creative expression that we do that, that we, we've been doing that like for, for you know, for, <laughs> yeah, for, for the beginning of times so we've been decorating our, <laughs> our, our homes our and homes, our bodies. Yeah. Our caves. Yeah, our caves, yeah. yeah. Sharing yeah. foods and song and ritual. And that's that's actually how how culture, how ritual, how meaning is is giving to giving to life actually. And I think it's so we've been expressing ourselves the whole day. I mean, mm -hmm. you collected your outfit this morning, that's creative expression. You put on makeup this morning, that's creative expression. You made a meal for yourself. That's also a form of expression. It's like we're doing it the whole Fuck. <laughs> yeah. 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 So to say that you're not creative, but it, for me that means that you're not alive. Actually. Yeah. 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 
like, are you alive? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think the camera can hear it, but I, but I can hear the softness of the hairs of the brush on the paper. Exactly. Yeah. Like also the sounds and maybe even the the smell because if you grind your own ink, it also smells like so earthy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm afraid I will um, paint on your table. That's not that's not a problem. That's that's why I have a studio <laughs> space like this. This. <laughs> this is like a nice moment also to check in with yourself. Like, okay, is there still like a blockage, or do you feel free to use the whole paper, or you know, is there still an insecurity, for instance? And then maybe try to challenge it. Like, try to use a lot of space and pressure uh, pencil for instance just play around by experiencing how all those different sensations feel go soft go hard go big go small and then something that i also really love to do is experiment with vamp reading you can Use your breathing to go, for instance, like go up on your inhale and down on your exhale. But what I also really love to do is to literally like pause on your inhale, like check in with yourself on your inhale. Mm -hmm. And then on your exhale, like everything that you feel or want to express or the energy that you feel when you check in, just let it out. Like if that's love or if that's a soft feeling or maybe there is like a little frustration there or insecurity or whatever like and just just like with meditation that on your exhale you let go of your you know tension in your body for instance you can literally let go of that tension or whatever you want to let go of on paper so I inhale check in and then exhale let it all out and you'll feel that when you express yourself on an exhale there's like a little bit more power behind it as well and there's literally like energy behind it and that's and it's actually so it's, this is the way how I try to create like in every aspect of my <laughs> my artistic practice actually. Should we open our eyes again? Yeah, we can try to open our eyes. Yeah, I'm talking too much, right? It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's so different. It is so different, yeah. I also love to, when you open your eyes, to, I mean, it's, it's super abstract and it doesn't represent anything and that's actually the point of it, but still, like, I always ask myself a question, like, what energy does it show me or what are the words that come, come to mind? Yeah. And that, and that could be something personal, you know, it's like the first thing that comes to mind is, is the right answer, I guess. And then I also, the second question that I always try to ask myself when I make a creative work is where's the beauty? Or where is my eye, go, where does my eye mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. tend to go to? Because of, like we, like we talked about before, our first reaction often is like negative, like, oh, oh, blah, oh my ink went, went dry, or oh, the, the color is not that intense, you mm -hmm. know, because it was still so... <laughs> Maybe we could use a little bit more pigments there. <laughs> but then those are all judgments and there's all negative emotions. While even in the chaos of a flow drawing like this, there's still elements there that are interesting or where something That's is happening. Funny. I mean, I love this, the subtleness of like one, like for instance, in your drawing, like how the color is like floating around there. Yeah, I love when they meet each other. Exactly, yeah. The contrast between those. And also yeah like <laughs> yeah but i also love the little you know mistake like a yeah. drop that just you know i love drops <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and it, was... it looked i while doing it i i i realized that it i'm creating an image of it in my mind yeah how it's probably looks like oh really yeah and it's completely different, different yeah completely different in my mind i had the whole paper filled yeah with lines and it's there's so much free space still yeah so funny well that also you know tells you something about you know you you thought you you took up a lot of space and you could take up a lot of more space <laughs> indeed, yeah indeed yeah 
Yeah, and I love those reflections, you know, even if it's like such, such a simple uh, exercise, you can do it like in one or two minutes every day if you like to on, a, on an old paper, if you, if you want, but then it tells you something about your, the energy where, you, where mm -hmm. you're at at this moment. It's like, Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I really love the simplicity and the, the powerfulness of, the, of that in, yeah, in a drawing like this. I really want to do a second layer on top. Yeah. <laughs> I really love to question things. That's the thing. Like, why is it that mm -hmm. women view themselves through this lens? Why is it that we're sexualized the whole time? Why is it that people think they're not creative while everyone is? Like, why is that? And I'm, I'm, I really love to deconstruct those, uh, yeah, old-fashioned ideas, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's actually what I'm what I'm trying to do with my work and in my workshops. I I think you created a, a program, yeah, a yearly program that is called Creative Flow. Yeah, um, I believe I read that it sold out twice already. Yeah, already. that's true. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Can you tell us more yeah. about that program? Yeah, that program is actually very much linked to what we talked about before. It's like it's all about. Uh, connecting people to that creative energy again. And especially people who believe that they lost it or that they're not creative. That's like, that's my biggest challenge. Or mm -hmm. I think that's, that's where my biggest wins uh, for me personally are. Um, Do people that think they are not creative sign up for that program? Yeah, because a lot of people do have the feeling um, a lot of people do, uh, that are in a program are actually like, oh, I used to be so creative as a kid. Um, or I used to love to draw, but I lost it. I lost it, yeah. And it's, or I'm stuck in my nine to five job and I'm... Don't have time. I, yeah, yeah, I need something. I feel the urge to, mm. to make something, but I don't know how or I don't know when or where to start, where yeah. to start yeah, yeah. or whatever. So, and that's actually, that's actually... Yeah, amplifies the idea that it's in everyone, like the urge to be creative or to go back to how you f how you played as a kid, for mm. instance. It's like, it's I believe it's in everyone, and yeah, maybe some people <laughs> buy a course and other people do it, express themselves in another way. But I think that's actually the feeling that I'm uh, trying to connect people back to. It's like. It's not about, I'm, I'm not going to learn you any technical skills. I'm, I'm going to learn you how to integrate creativity in your daily life, actually. And I do that through drawing, because drawing is my portal. It's my medium. It's my, I love to draw. So that, yeah. those, that's where I'm, most of my tools are. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I definitely believe that there's, there's different entries to, um, to that energy. So because many I, ways. Yeah. I really see creativity as like a life force energy instead of a skill that you can learn. Mm -hmm. I start my creative practice as well with an exercise like this to get things out of my system that I need to release or to get in the right mind space to create from. But also for me, I also try to, when I look at my drawing, for instance, it tells me something about myself and where I, where I am at the moment, but I also already see, you know, shapes and forms. and. Maybe that's like unconditioned that way, but I always mm -hmm. see like female figures or faces or eyes, and I see a lot of birds lately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> but then I try to look at it like like a kid looks at the clouds, like with a wondrous mind. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes that can also be like an inspiration for my creations. I like if I'm gonna make a second one, for instance, right now. Sometimes I also make like okay, feminine shapes, and then I'm doing the same exercise but then with in the back of my mind the idea of drawing feminine shapes for instance and then yeah <laughs> that, that's literally like the starting point of my my yeah. work most of the times i might like it even more with my left hand yeah <laughs> did not expect that yeah i always love to give to give myself like some restrictions so that I can be free in a way. It's like it also the restriction gives you gives you also a lot of freedom because you don't have to think about all the options. Yeah. Then. Yeah. And this time I I don't know, I just I felt it more and I didn't I wasn't busy with making an image of the drawing in my head. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can just, you know, do this exercise like endlessly, like with different materials, with your eyes closed, with your eyes open, with your left hand, with your right hand, on the rhythm of your breath, uh, with a different theme in mind or with a different emotion. Sometimes I also use it to actually like focus on a certain emotion. Like mm -hmm. sometimes I'm super stressed and I'm like, okay, I want to be more chill, for instance, or I need to prepare for yeah. a presentation or whatever. And I just make a flow drawing to let go of the stress, for instance, and then focus on, okay, I want to create, or I want to do this presentation out of love and out of, you know, uh, feeling secure. Yeah. And then I'd literally like focus on that, on that energy and then just invite it back in and then try to, yeah, express myself on paper is for me, it's like the safest way or like also like a playground or also like a place where I can experiment and practice literally like practice that emotion practice, practice go. Yeah, yeah and also practice to live out of a certain uh, f or create or share from a certain energy because like yeah just create a mindful moment there to okay i want to be i want to share out of love or i want to share out of uh, uh, confidence okay. yeah for instance yeah, yeah. And then use the exercise to get into that space, actually. So, yeah. <laughs> I loved it. I hope you liked it. Thank you, I loved it. <laughs> thank you, Sela, for having me today. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. It was such a great day and um, I really enjoyed it, everything. Yeah, thank thanks you. for the nice chat. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you again. Yeah, me too. Cool. Bye. Bye.